Hello again, or for the very first time, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between, crack open a cold one because I'm some guy. And I'm here to carry on with the walkthrough slash over analysis slash review of Undercover Missions Curse. We're on the chapter 5, so that means we've reached a little bit over the halfway point. So what does this game have in store for us now, you ask? Well, let's find out right now. I'm too late. Oh no, someone's murdered the captain, I think. Or he fell on a ketchup bottle. So you should know the routine if you've ever played an adventure game. Click on everything and try to figure out what the hell you need to do here. I'm assuming something with the captain, but first let's grab a pen on the ground. Do I need it now? Oh, so much sass. Oh well, let's go ahead and check out the captain now. The wound is still bleeding heavily. I have to stop the bleeding. Okay, so we gotta stop the captain from bleeding now. This should be pretty straightforward. So if this was the real world, you'd expect to find everything you need right here in the sick bay to heal up the captain. But you won't, because this is an adventure game. So what we're first gonna grab is some germicide hanging out over here in this corner. This is a germicide for disinfecting wounds. Can also be used on open wounds. And then we're gonna grab some bandages hanging out underneath this sink. There are sterile materials. Wound compresses, for example. So as you would imagine, we're going to use the disinfectant and the compress on the wound. There's a wound compress on the wound. But wait, there's more. I know, it's like a terrible infomercial. We still do not have all the items necessary to heal up the captain. We're only about halfway there, actually. So now what do we do, you ask? Ho oh, ho! Well, let's go ahead and just cut to that. You see, what we're going to do here is check out the new area on our map. The corridor, ooh, and oh my god, there's a baddie there, and he's conveniently looking the other way. Allowing us to rummage through these debris right here and get out a rock, because we're going to need that to apply pressure to the wound. This helps in placing the pressure bandage. Yeah, we could not possibly find anything useful like that in this sick bay. No sirree, Bob. Obviously, the Russian Navy has experienced some financial setbacks since the fall of the Soviet Union. Because we're going to apply a rock to this guy's wound. Hey, pressure's been applied, though. Now all we need is one more bandage. Hopefully my frustration could be sensed through my erratic mouse movements. Why the hell are bandages in a bunk bed? Why? You know it took me a really long time to figure this out, because why the hell would I be clicking on a bunk bed? Other than, well, this is an adventure game, so I should probably be clicking and looking at everything multiple times. Should have known better. Should have known better. But hey, now we can heal up the captain at last. I can't leave the captain here. I'd better take him to his cabin. So this is done. Well, yeah, it is done. I guess we took the captain to his mysterious bed, never to be seen or heard from again. So now that we've healed up the captain and moved him to an undisclosed location that's not on the map, uh, what do we do now, you ask? Well, we bash a fire extinguisher over this mercenary's head. If you want to know what the fire extinguisher is, it's in the very same room. It's just like on the wall. You can grab it. It looks like a fire extinguisher. So, if I'm guessing, it looks like we sprayed the guy with the fire extinguisher we had. I guess. I don't know, the screen went all white, although I could still see what was going on. He just kind of plops over as the screen goes white. I don't know, maybe he was worried he got glaucoma or something. Or maybe the game's wires are just showing. I will tie him up and get him out of sight. So we're going to go ahead and use the zip ties on him. You know, the zip ties that we found in the bridge, hanging out with the wires. Where else do you put your zip ties? He won't run around like this. He's unconscious. I need to tie him up, gag him, and get him out of sight. Well, perhaps we can find those necessary items over here in this trunk that we have to minigame our way through. It's like Tetris, but static. That's mainly trash, but there is an army knife too. I'll take that for sure. This is a very sharp Spetsnuts combat knife. So let's gag up this guy by cutting up the blanket we have on us from earlier. And now all that's left for us is to throw this dude in the trunk we just opened. Very good indeed. Now I have to hide him somewhere. He's not exactly tiny. Oh, that's just adorable. We're carrying him around in our back pocket. Yeah. And now we can't kill him. 
Trust me, I tried. So just throw them into the damn trunk and then, well, look at some stuff. In the air treatment room that just suddenly and magically opened up as soon as we threw the body into the chest. All right, now that we're here, let's look at some stuff we can rotate and rotate it. And you may be wondering, guy, why are we rotating these valves? You see, what I'm trying to do here is evacuate all the fire extinguisher gas from the sub so I can save the crew that's going to inevitably die in the explosion that's going to happen. The fire extinguishing unit is switched off. No more fire extinguishing gas is being released. Yeah. So let's go back to the corridor now and repeat the process by rotating some more valves open. And ta-da! We saved the crew to only die later. The valve is now open. Yes, it works! Fresh oxygen is sent to the rear sections again. That might be enough for the crew. Well, let's go see how the old crew's doing by looking into this little port window here inside this door that's welded shut that apparently is containing behind it the entire 100-odd man crew of this sub. The entire crew is knocked unconscious by the extinguishing gas. Oh, really, game? I'm totally buying that. Oh, yeah, look, right behind this curtain over here, I swear. I swear there's a 100-man crew. I just, you know, just, just take my word for it. Take my word for it. <sighs> Oh well. So now what the hell do we gotta do? Well, as best as I can tell, we go back to the bridge and look at the status screen, and then eventually something happens. The patrol boat is now next to the Kursk. The identifier for it is the Balakovo. Somebody is coming. I need to hide. Oh, wait a minute. We magically have the Balakovo file on us. We've had it since the start of this chapter, but I never addressed it. But oh no! Remember that folder said that that ship was stolen, so clearly the bad guys have this ship to steal stuff from this sub. Ah! And they're coming for us, so let's hide behind this desk if I haven't done it already. That's done. Now we just have to find that FSB lady. She's gotta be somewhere. That's not SARS Palace in St. Petersburg. That's a submarine. And that's just some terrible English right there spoken by what sounds like a native speaker. At least we got the rest. That makes our job easier. And then let's get out of here. What a kawinky dink. We're trying to do the same thing. A pin. I guess it fell from the desk. Let's take the pin apart. The little spring coil could be useful. I know I do exactly the same whenever I'm being chased by mercenaries. You know, just take a pen apart, get a spring. Oh yeah, we use a spring to unlock the box next to us. The box is open. Now, can anyone out there explain to me how the hell does this work? How does a spring open up a locked aluminum box? I mean, I don't know. Do we like put it underneath the flaps and it just springs up and the thing just pops off? But if that's the case, why couldn't we just use our bare hands? A pair of gloves, a walkie-talkie, and a screwdriver. Well, that's just wonderful. All the key items that we need to escape this room were conveniently in this easily open box. Otherwise, we'd be screwed. We'd be dead right here. Although I do wonder how screwed we are exactly, considering these guards aren't even looking for us. They're just hanging out. I don't know, maybe they're on a smoke break, but we can't see their sig because, you know, they're doing it underneath their gas mask, so we can't see it. So let's go ahead and murder them right now. Huh? Okay, those two are distracted. In case you couldn't tell, I threw the screwdriver into the puddle. And now I'm going to put the rubber gloves on the little hose here and electrocute these guys to death. It worked. They're done. We just killed two guys. Yay us! Now let's go loot their corpses. I still do not know what to do with him. He had a pipe wrench. I could use that. Less for working, and more for self-defense. Ah, yes, my screwdriver. One of the guards I've knocked out. Wonderful, now that we clicked on this guy a bunch of times to get all of our items, let's go ahead and try to figure out where the hell to put his body. Because apparently we solid snake and need to hide the corpses so the guards don't go on alert. Yes, one guard fits securely into it. Unfortunately, just one. Yeah, we're just going to go ahead and put him in this locker that's near the first officer's room. Pretty straightforward. Now let's listen to her try to move the body. And let's go. Oh! Uh, he is heavy! <sighs> that was the first guard. Now, what about the second guard, you ask? Well, let's go back to the leisure room and put him in the toilet. Yeah, we're gonna put him in the toilet. A place that nobody's ever gonna use. So I'm gonna be upfront with you guys right now. The way I was able to uncover the solution to this puzzle was by just trying to see if this girl would use the bathroom. And no, that's not a joke. That's honest to God's truth right there. I was trying to see if there'd be like a funny Easter egg or something, but nope. It was the solution to the puzzle. I'm not entirely sure if I would have found it otherwise. So how fortuitous of me. Number two done 
So now that that's taken care of for reasons I fully can't comprehend, I mean, why do we need to hide the corpses? I guess they don't want to know someone's running around killing their men, but won't they figure that out when they don't call in or something? Or maybe this is just a ragtag group of people that just are doing whatever the hell they want. Oh well. Now all that we're going to have to do is just waste our time for a while and wait for something to happen. No, I'm serious. What the hell are you doing, Sobolev? Major General Grimin, we have the Kursk under control. That is not our plan, Sobolev. What were you thinking? What is the status? The captain is dead and the crew is kept in the rear space. We have caught Corner Belnikov, so everything is under control. I can take the Kursk wherever your client wants. Come to the Balakovo. Oh, damn. So they are totally trying to steal this sub. to subjacking. And we gotta stop it. And yeah, that does it for chapter five. Wow, that's a pretty short chapter. Oh, well, on to chapter six as soon as I can find the time. Have a good day, guys.